Well, what a wonderful evening it is, friends. Uh, just kind of reeling over this uh, Democratic pick for the VP. Not really reeling. I was really nervous that they were going to pick Shapiro. Um, but he's Jewish. The Democrats don't want disruption with the Palestinian folks in their uh, in their little circle. See, you, I'm serious. I'm telling you. So, uh, if you think about it, Tim Walz was uh, a, uh, what would you call that? Racist pick. <laughs> That's the, the, the reasoning, anyway. But, hey, whatever. It's their pick. Now, uh, Shapiro is, is more moderate, uh, more uh, middle of the road than Walls. Uh, I don't know if you've done any research, but uh, this guy, uh, I, I guess we could go in chronological order. So, um, he started out, uh, he, he's a teacher. Uh, and he, he actually, I think, probably right out of uh, high school or in, during high school, possibly, joined the National Guard, which is fine. I commend him for that service. I respect that service. I really, really do. Now, um, it was after the 20-some years in the National Guard when his unit was uh, picked for deployment to Iraq. Uh, I don't remember when it was going to be. Was that around 2004 or something that they were going to deploy his unit to Iraq? And he got he 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 applied for a discharge. I don't know if it was a, a, a hardship discharge or or whatever. It's because he was going to commit himself to a gubernatorial race. Um, there's other ways to do that. You can remain enlisted. And uh, you can run that race, run that campaign, and not be deployed. There's all kinds of ways to go around it. But he left. Uh, his command sergeant major was not happy at all about that. Uh, other people in that unit are speaking out. And they were not happy when he left at all. They were very upset about it. Um, you know, he he told the troops that he was going to be there with him. Uh, yeah, no, he ain't going. So, yeah, that's kind of that. That's a disappointing uh, thing to hear. But um, we can move forward. He, of course, you know, he's been a member of Congress. Much respect for that. Um, so I don't know. Been a few years ago, ten years ago, maybe he got popped for DUI. He was drunk driving whatever, tried to get out of it, tried to lie his way out of it. Hey, it happens, right? Now you listen to the guy talk. Really nice guy. Uh, real easy to listen to. Down to earth. You know, just like a conversation like this, right? And he talks about, oh, be good to your neighbor, be nice and everything. Uh, but then 2020 popped around. What, what Was it 2020? 2019? 2019? Anyway, yeah, he he let uh, he let Minneapolis burn. He was responsible. He could have called in the National Guard, the very people he used to work for. He could have called them as the governor. Say, hey, we got a problem. We need to guard here right now. Uh, not not tomorrow. Not the day after. Not three days after. Three days. No, yesterday. We need you guys here yesterday. Because these people are going to burn this place down. They're burning a police precinct. That precinct, that building has still not been reestablished. I don't think the police, of course, you know, you're dealing with union stuff. But I don't think they're going to build another uh, building. And they're not going to staff another precinct in that area uh, until shit gets straightened out. But I, I, you know, I'm just talking out my ass. What do I know? I'm just saying that he was the governor at that time. He was responsible for what was going on there. Uh, that's on him. That's on him. Um, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Uh, his policies. Okay. Let's talk about his policies. Um, he's already implemented uh, 
the uh, feminine hygiene products in the boys' bathrooms in the schools. That, no, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Look it up. I'm telling you. Um, Minneapolis, well, I'm sorry, Minnesota is uh, a uh, sanctuary state for gender dysphoric children who want what they consider health care to transition. Um, that means that they can go to a doctor on their own, no parental consent, so the parent won't find out that their child is going to the doctor for hormones and gender transitioning treatment until they get the insurance bill. And he's also made it mandatory that your insurance company has to pay I don't see how you can get away with that. I don't see how that's even constitutional. But somehow, in the state of Minnesota, the insurance companies are required to cover gender transition treatment on children. So, um, no, I, I don't agree with that. I know there's a lot of people that don't. You know, it was a thing a couple of years ago. Oh, it was a big thing and all this other stuff. Now... Okay, so if you're part of the LGBT community, uh, I don't disrespect that, but um, the transitioning uh, as a minor, minor trans, minors transitioning is bad. And you got to understand that, that a lot of these kids, we're talking uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, um, way too young to be making those kind of decisions. Listen, you're under 18, you can't take somebody to court. You can't sue somebody if you're under 18. You can't you can't vote if you're under 18. You can't buy alcohol if you're under 21. You used to be 18 in some states. I'm telling you, dangerous policies, dangerous policies. Um, do I have anything else that, that I have scribbled down here? Um, just to, you know... Uh, the feminine hygiene products and, and the sanctuary state stuff and also the uh, uh, illegal immigrants. It's a sanctuary location. They've been flying illegal immigrants into our country. If you don't know yet, look up Omni Air. Uh, they're a big provider of those services for the government. They have a big contract with the government. They've been flying in undocumented immigrants and they give them a handful of these just visa pay cards. That's We're talking stacks of them. Uh, and, and they give them to them. I'm not sure if that's funded through the churches or through the government, but the, these people are providing them with the means to come here and and survive. I don't know what the reasoning is. I honest to goodness don't know what the reasoning is. But um, it, it, it's providing an unstable environment, I guess you could say. I mean, we've all talked about, you know, the 10% of every population being evil people, and now we have 2 million of these evil people in our country, and we, we have to really look at that. Well, like, uh, they're flying them into Topeka, uh, into the airfield on the south side of Topeka. They're flying them in directly here. They don't cross the border. They don't swim across the damn uh, river. No, they get on a plane in Peru or uh, Venezuela, or Colombia, and they fly straight here, straight to your state, to your city. Now, the state I live in doesn't, doesn't tolerate that, but the state of Kansas allows it. Uh, Laura Kelly, she's a, she's a Democrat. Um, this uh, Tim, Tim Walls, they're flying him into Minneapolis. Look up Omni Air. And, and do a little research. You'll find, you'll find out what I'm talking about. But they're flying all these undocumented, employee, undocumented immigrants into our country. Uh, I don't even think it's legal. How in the hell are you supposed to go through TSA? Now they're flying them within the continental U.S., redirecting them to different states, different cities. I don't get it. I don't get it. But whatever. Well, he plays a big role in that. 
um, he is, you know, right there in the socialist movement. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Listen to my old friend, Yuri Blagorovich, or whatever his name is. Um, he, uh, he spoke back in the 80s about the infiltration of the United States. And of course, that was the big push um, in, uh, in India. He was the one in the 60s that helped flip India's government. Well, after all this, I need a drink. We got these, uh, these ice balls. Uh, you got to be careful when you drop them in the glass, though. It will break the glass. If you remember, I had some granite squares, cubes, not squares, but cubes, and, and I, I dropped them in the glass. My daughter bought that for me with the little glasses and dropped them in the glass, and you just shake them around, and the glass broke. And then you get came in a box and everything. It was the whole thing, legit glasses and the and the granite uh, ice stones or cooling stones and everything. And I was like, oh, shit. I wonder if I can get that under warranty. Anyway, let's have a drink. Uh, today, we are drinking out of this fancy, fancy glass. It is... Uh, from Free State Beer is what it says on it. So Free State Brewing, probably. Um, it's got a sunflower on it. Well, that's uh, Lawrence, Kansas. We a, a wonderful story. We met this fella there. His name was Johnny. I can't remember his last name, but he was a an opera singer. Possibly still is. I don't know. Nicest guy in the world, but definitely has some uh, social uh, issues. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe Asperger's or something. Different dude. Very nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. We we went back to uh, Lawrence several years later. Had to have been five years. And uh, everybody, it was just the four of us, so it, 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 we, were, it, and we were all talking, what, if, what happens if we run into Johnny again? Oh, that would be a hoot. And we went to Texas Roadhouse in... Uh, in Lawrence on the south side of town. We're sitting there, sitting there waiting on our dinner and drinks and whatever. And I look over at the bar and they were doing the dance and stuff, right? And I see this guy over there clapping kind of out of sync and laughing and just having a, a jolly time. And I looked over there and I said, I'm, I'm telling you, that's fucking Johnny. That's Johnny. And they're like, Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Go ask him. Go ask him. I was like, okay, I'll go ask. And I walked up there, and I had the picture on my phone ready. I said, are you Johnny? And he says, well, yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Johnny. It's so nice to meet you, blah, 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 blah. And I said, do you remember this picture? Oh, my gosh, that was just before I went to Frankfurt. I remember that. And uh, Oh, just a wonderful, wonderful dude. Anyway, yeah, Free State Brewing. Uh Beer's okay. I don't know. I'm not much of a beer drinker. That's why tonight I'm going to have some of this Red Eye Hot Cinnamon Whiskey with some Pepsi. I, I tried having some Pepsi with uh, Cinnamon Pepsi with some whiskey, but I don't remember. I think that was bourbon. This is a corn whiskey, straight up corn whiskey, and I don't even know. Don't even know. Uh, oh, boy. Grand River... Carbondale, Illinois. So, if you've ever been to Carbondale, Illinois, you quite possibly have been on the uh, Illinois Wine Trail. Lots of fun. Um, I'm not a big fan of Illinois, but the Illinois Wine Trail is a joy. I'm sorry, not the Illinois Wine Trail. It's the Shawnee Wine Trail. It goes from Carbondale uh, down to Paducah. It, Correct me if I'm wrong, Carbondale should be the northernmost tip of that uh, Shawnee Wine Trail. And it kind of makes a, a, a vaginal <laughs> shape. It's a, it's a vajayjay. Anyway, you come down to like Paducah area and then you turn around and you go back up on a different highway. So you have an, you have an east side, a west side and an east side. So anyway... Lots of fun. Go try it sometime. Von Jakob Winery. That's a lot of good fun. And there, I think the other one is Woodland or something. I don't remember. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It's really cool. Most of them are out in the middle of nowhere, though. But it is uh, it is a tremendous amount of fun. I'm going to recommend going in April. Um, the apple trees are in bloom. So, anyway, yeah. Good times in Illinois. 
Even though it's a left estate, it's still, I, I find places where I can enjoy myself. Just like, uh, you know, Georgia is not a leftist state, but Atlanta is growing, and it's weird. It's weird, man. Even up in Gainesville, it's getting weird. So, uh, yeah, a lot of weirdness going around everywhere. Um, so, I don't know, but research the folks that you're going to vote for. And I don't care who you vote for. You vote for who you want to vote for. Just remember, you got to go vote. People bled and died for your ability to go out and exercise your right to vote. The local elections are just as important. Uh, in this state, we had a 30% turnout for our primary yesterday. Cheers to 30%. That is a high percentage for a primary. Usually, 30% is what you find in a general election in November. So uh, if, if that's a sign of things to come, we're going to have another big turnout this year in November. Um, I am I am not going to vote for the Democratic Party. They have tore some shit up. Uh, it, it is bad. And the person that's running right now and her running mate, um, they are leaning towards socialism. And I'm telling you, just like... I, I, Listen to what they say. It's not just me. Listen to what the professionals say. The educated people, they know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, study your, your history. Study your, your government. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's very important because you can vote your way into socialism, but you have to shoot your way out. It's a very dangerous road to travel. Look at what happened to Venezuela. Okay, that's what they did. That's what Cuba did. Uh, we got Russians running around in Cuba right now with warships just floating around the island. You know how close they are to Florida? Shoot, they could spit and, and hit Florida. Uh, I'm telling you, very dangerous situation. So keep your eyes and ears open. I don't think anything's going to come of it. I really don't. But, um, you know, uh, that fellow over there in Russia, he likes to flex his muscles, even though he's, you know... Knocking on 75, I think, now. Um, he's still a dangerous dude. He's KGB. He, he was an operator. I, I'm telling you, very dangerous person. And the people he hangs around with, very dangerous people. Remember the dude? Remember the dude in the plane that uh, said, you know, he, he wasn't getting orders and he wasn't getting supplies in Ukraine, and he was going to turn his tanks around, and they, they were going to march to Moscow. And they, they everything cooled down. He was able to go somewhere else and, and you know, uh, escape prosecution. But then they were like, oh, come back. Come back, comrade. You fly in. We'll talk about it. We'll iron everything out. Plane in the sky over Moscow. Shoo, boom. Dead. Done. Why? Because he pissed the wrong guy off. I'm telling you, you don't make that guy mad. Very careful around him. Be very, very careful around him. Why do you think Tucker Carlson, everybody was like, oh, he agreed with everything he said. Dude, you're in Moscow with an interview in front of this guy, one of the most dangerous people in the world, and you're interviewing him? You better damn well be agreeable. If not, you just might not return to the United States. If you do, you may not be alive. But I don't know what happened. He just, you know, he had the borscht and... I guess food poisoning. I don't know. That's that's what'll happen. I'm telling you. That's a good drink. I like it. I like it. It's not hot. It's not hot. So try that sometime. Go to Illinois. Do the Shawnee Wine Trail. Uh, but also, more importantly, pay attention to how you're going to vote. All right. Study your ballots. Know what's on the ballots. Write it down. Write it down if you have to. And... Uh, don't vote on somebody because you like them or don't like them, because they're a nice guy or not a nice guy. I'm telling you, nice guys finish last. You know, we don't want a nice guy going over and having chit-chats uh, over in Russia. That ain't going to work, okay? I'm telling you, treading on thin ice. So uh, be very careful how you vote. Uh, don't vote for your heart and who you think is a nice person. Vote for who you think... Uh, has the best policies. If you agree with what's been going on in our country, then by all means, vote over here. Vote over here. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to vote for where I want. You vote for who you want. And 
you know, will accept uh, the outcome in in November and and of course eventually January. We'll accept that outcome. We'll deal with it and and we'll march on. We're still going to be here. We're still going to have to work together and know each other. So treat your neighbors better than you treat yourself. And uh, if you're not following Jesus Christ, follow somebody who is. All right. Have a great week. Much love to you.